So welcome to the lecture on motivation of uh, our employees. I know that this is not going to be a complete analysis of all the motivation theories uh, in psychology. Uh, the thing about this is that when you talk about motivation, immediately what comes to mind are subjects in psychology. Like for example, what we have here is a work of uh, a doctorate student in, in psychology, uh, in positive psychology. And almost immediately, uh, all the theories about motivation is going to be given to you as an HR practitioner, which is the reason why most companies still hire um, psychology graduates in HR. There's nothing wrong with that, but if you will just flood your HR department with psychology graduates, no offense, right? Because I know that most of us are in the field of psychology. You would miss out on the other things, the other aspects of, of uh, HR. Another thing that you would miss, of course, is uh, the concept about legal uh, aspects, right? The aspects of leadership. Of course, you can have leadership even, even if you're in the, in the program of psychology. Uh, aspect of training, right? The aspect of business, of, of, of accounting, because uh, as, a, as a psych major, maybe you won't have training in, in uh, analyzing the, the resources of the company and, and also how you will design your job, um, job grading and your uh, regression analysis for your, for your uh, wage structure and all that. So it's really a pretty complicated thing. That's why when I was uh, uh, teaching my master's uh, students, I would o often say that, you know, instead of hiring only psychology majors, then maybe we could have a good, um, um, uh, you know, a, a good staff, uh, a good uh, uh, group or team with, with diverse talents. Of course, with HRIS, you can ascribe that to, or you can assign that to, to your to your IT guys or, or whoever is good with uh, with IT. Um, and of course, legal management has to be assigned to us a person who understands about, uh, you know, uh, government mandates and 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 law. Of course, as a person of of uh, any program. You sometimes you have retainers also. You you can all always think about these things, but uh, that you really that's a problem with with uh, with HR. It's complicated. It has so many uh, aspects in it. All right, so let's move on to to what uh, we are dealing today, which is uh, motivation theory. So what is motivation? Why do we talk about it? Motivation, of course, uh, comes from the uh, understanding to the realization that if your guys, if your, if your people is not motivated, then they will not be effective. If your people is effective, then they would do better even if they are, uh, you know, uh, even if they are not, I don't want to say this completely out, you know, outright because I might be mis misunderstood. Even if if your staff is not paid as much as the other guys from the other company, if they are motivated, I don't know by what, you know, uh, it could be other things. It's not just about the money. And you will think uh, if you study about all these motivation theories, it will come to the realization that it's not about, it's not just about the money. Of course, it's, it's there. Money is always a motivating factor, but uh, when you talk about the theories and delve with it deeper, you would realize it's not the motivating factor. It's just part of it. It's the starting point, but it's not going to be the end point. So why motivate your employees? It's almost always it's it's a given. You have to motivate your employees for them to to be happier in their position, to work better. To 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 show up for work, always, uh, you know, not uh, incurring lates and absences. 
to be willing to to render uh, extended hours uh, you know without always counting the cost and, and and what you're going to pay them so motivation is really a, a factor that you have to consider as an HR so these are the um, um, the leading theories I think there are 20 theories here that are most uh, referred to they are the most famous they are most quoted, they are most cited, and this is not a complete set, but uh, let's run down and, uh, and just to understand some of the most popular theories in motivation. So motivation psychology uh, usually here, it says here, usually attempts to show how motivation varies within a person at different times or among different people at the same time. So that is why it's important in, in companies, in, in the corporate setup. Okay, so we have uh, behavioral, we have developmental analysis here, we have also cognitive analysis. Okay, so theories of motivation have been many, and this corresponds to the behaviorist approach, especially during the uh, Hawthorne studies and all that, uh, starting from the be behavioral uh, theories in in uh, after the scientific management era of course in the beginning turn of the century it was taylor it was all in you know industrial engineers uh, frederick taylor uh, people are just regarded as mere statistic of course this is this is a an overstatement i mean of course it's not just like that but uh, the main understanding at the turn of the century is that there has to be people working at certain positions and there are just like the military they have to be there they have to show up on time they have to work whatever is given to them that's it but then as time goes by they realize it's not just uh, the numbers it's not just the positions sometimes people uh, work better if they are in a better culture about uh, if they're a better culture fit that is why the theories of motivation started to come in, right? Okay, so these are the the theories. Of course, the first uh, theory is the theory that you would really come um, come in contact with are the theories the theory set up by by Maslow uh, the hierarchy the need hierarchy, right? And you have here more or less corresponding to the Maslow's need hierarchy, the need for psychological needs, safety, belongingness, status and self-esteem, and then to the end it's self-actualization. Every person uh, has a different need. Uh, the hierarchy of need may, may be different. For example, if you're a person of uh, good uh, means, uh, you, you don't worry about money anymore, uh, you have uh, you have your safety and protection, you have your own home and all that, you're stable, then maybe uh, your target uh, for motivation, you know, what motivates you, maybe affiliation and belongingness, or, or maybe self-esteem, or maybe self-actualization. But if you have not fulfilled all these things at the, at the uh, lower uh, spectrum, then maybe it will be hard for you to look at self-actualization. It's like you're being reminded at what um, um, was this guy um, uh, Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi said that you know for for the poor uh, the bread is their life. I don't know if it's if it's not exactly uh, that, but if if you're God and you want to convince a poor person that you exist you will not dare show your face to a poor person unless in the form of bread so that's exactly what he said i mean also in the form of bread you know and uh, that only means that you know for a person who is who is hungry who is needy then that's what motivates him food is what motivates him but of course towards the end some, some people are saying you know that's not really true because some people might even be motivated even though they're hungry all right so uh and they have some of them have criticized 
Maslow in you know they were saying you know Maslow just pr proposed this he did not even have the empirical studies to to you know to show this to demonstrate this but all that is scientific but uh, we we're just uh, focusing on on the, the theories and how they they apply to us in HR so McClellan took a different approach in the needs that uh, that was uh, proposed by by Maslow he said that uh, uh, to conceptualize the need uh, his, his approach is to conceptualize the needs and argue that needs are developed and learned okay so he focused the research away from satisfaction um, so he categorized the needs or motives into achievement affiliation and power so for him it's it can be classified as is it a, is it a need for affiliation, achievement, or is it power? All right. So that's the achievement motivation theory. Okay. Just uh, read through that. Motivation hygiene, on the other hand, that's uh, Herzberg. This is one of the uh, most famous, uh, po most popular theories of motivation. It's also called the two-factor theory. Um, the only thing that it, this did was to divide Maslow's need hierarchy into two major areas. Is it a motivation or is it hygiene? Motivation, uh, hygiene are, are those that are uh, focused only on um, uh, 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 you know, the food, security. These are uh, hygiene factors. And they are called deficiency needs. Uh, without them, individuals will be unhappy. All right, so salary is there, interpersonal relationship, working conditions. So that's why they they are called hygiene. It's not that they are not important, but without them, the 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 employees will be unhappy. Okay, but what motivates a person according to Herzberg, and this has been um, analyzed and experimented on many many times, are the motivation factors. Uh, Okay, these are the personal growth, achievement, recognition, the work itself, responsibility, advancement. So what, what does it say? Uh, for example, salary. Salary does not make a person motivated. It's hard to, to quarrel uh, over that and say, you know, uh, uh, people will debate you over that. Of course, that's not true. They will say, salary will make me happy. Uh, increase in salary will make me happy. But Herzberg's understanding is not like that the idea first work is this for example a person with a uh, low salary low salary for example 10,000 pesos or 15 let's say 15,000 pesos you give him a raise for 5,000 of course he'll be happy from 15 to 20 I'll be happy right but then uh, over a course of time maybe six months one year maybe two years that increase will not make you happy anymore right so it's there only uh maybe to tickle your your joy for a period of time but then afterwards it dies down right so these are are your your given needs it has to be there like uh job define job context right uh, company policy, administration, supervision, they have to be there because if it's not there, people will be unhappy, right? The working conditions should be there. So these are your OSHA needs, right? These are your occupational safety and health and everything that's uh, needed there. So there are also process theories of motivation. Uh, Skinner, Victor Vroom, expectancy theory, these are my... Uh, uh, favorite uh, motivation theory back in, in in the graduate school equity theory locks goal setting theory those are these things so Skinner these are so psych psychological uh, positive reinforcement and as promoters uh, praise appreciation so tap in the back those are operant conditioning Skinner focuses on the positive reinforcement rather than on the negative reinforcement it's like instead of focusing on people uh, for example uh, instead of focusing on people with so many absences 
focus on the people with no absences and reward them so this, those are the reinforcement theory enforce catch uh, reinforce the good catch them when they are doing right all right so adam's equity uh theory of motivation adam's equity theory of motivation based on the social exchange theory this is already this is already very old 1965 so some some of these theories you can already uh, uh i don't want to say debunk but always improve already but these are the theories that have been um uh used by by hr managers for a long period of time and maybe uh what you can do right now as as um as an hr manager is to really focus or hr staff to really focus on on analyzing uh new researches for example on theory of motivations uh, because some of them these theories 1965 imagine we have not even gone to the moon right 1965 uh opec has not yet been you know has not yet signed their their oil cartel has not yet grouped together we don't have the 1987 crash you know the 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 war in in kuwait and all that and you know maybe the motivation has already changed right so anyway adam's equity theory suggests that we not only compare our contribution to the amount of rewards we receive but also compare them to what others receive for the same amount of course uh these things are hard to uh to apply in our in nature especially when we talk about uh you know um salaries so maybe just focus on rewards uh not not the monetary rewards but uh maybe uh those um immaterial rewards like tap in the back or lunch with the boss or something birthday uh you know uh, uh lunch with those people celebrating their birthdays those are important uh and they also bring your motivation up